Those that speak do not know and those that know do not speak. At first you think it's some kind of a moral thing, it's a um, superiority thing, it's some kind of do not cast pearls before a swine type of statement. That's a Abrahamic psychology. But then the more you feel into that, you realize within yourself you're always trying to find words for meanings and the words do not exist until new experience arises and gives them to you. And then when you find those words, you realize that the words are only meant for you. They don't really live in an um, objective reality as an objective truth other than through archetypes. Language of psyche, essentially. can label ourselves, we can say all these things like, I was born on a, a new moon, so there was no moon in the sky when I was born. I seek the light. I'm in a new moon energy. The sun is here. The next 10 degrees, whatever planets in there is in a new phase, conjunction with the sun. My moon is about within 10 degree orb of the sun. So I am curious by nature. That's one way to say that. Another way to say it is that in life things have happened to me experiences which told me who I was through emotional pain, all these other things. And I was not going to accept that. I was not going to live the life of some victim. I wasn't going to be programmed by another person's uh, spiritual dis-ease. So I cast off what I was told I was, what I was shown I was, and I seek more something else, a more free, open expression of existence, of perception. So that's another way to say the new moon thing. Another way to say it is that I am curious, I can't stop learning. It's hard for me to focus on one thing, I get bored with it. I like to learn many things. Sometimes I like to learn many things at the same time. And then in society and all that they call you got ADHD or whatever. We are relational beings. We um, want to s turn objective truths into consensus reality building blocks that we can construct meaning around. So we label things and we limit through labeling. And then we go through life learning all these different labels and we're carrying all this debris in the field that isn't even us. It's what other people 
have told us we are and then we identify with it as if we are known we are recognized whether it's for good or bad but ADHD all that stuff it only exists in oppression based learning system shortest to tallest memorization competition bells schedules these kind of things they neuter the natural spirit of humans they nullify our shine into these um, specific frequencies which fit into society and into structures fit into consensus reality expectation So naturally that's not natural. So maladies form, they are relational. For instance, if a bee is going to the flower for the pollen, you know, there's a symbiosis there. The flowers need the bees to propagate, the bees need the pollen to eat, to propagate their offspring as well. But certain flowers have certain other factors involved. Location, different predators, competition. So the bees start to behave differently in relation to those flowers, yet they're still one and the same. Society is always doing this, you know. It's always changing. It's one of the change mechanisms or the expressions of the song that we're living. Now some people, they really honor the systems, they honor the canon. They've got their Magna Carta next to them and they're reciting it word for word because it holds such powerful meaning to what their feeble mind, spirit could ever aspire because they don't believe themselves to be more than they are. They would rather stand on the shoulders of giants than on their own two feet. Master Blaster. They would rather be a parasite And so they protect the host, they protect the structure, society, whatever, the ideology. They protect their icons. Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> Until the icon Saturn turns on them and starts to devour them and then they are either destroyed spiritually or physically in the process. So we do not train children to be strong, we train them to be weak. And strength is not, you know, being a go-getter in the world, it's about independence and understanding the difference between self and other and how those differences are uh, the actual gift of life, that's where honor and distinction arise. So we live in these shadow loops, you know, not just for us or each other or our ancestors, but the future. You got to get the tension out before it corrupts. So now I meet people, you know, and I hear their stories. I hear what they've gone through in their um, in the throes of the emotional flows. Now, I went through it when I was very young, so I was able to um, drift out of that and realize that it's not me. So when those things came up in life, from time to time, I was able to not become possessed by what it was. 
doesn't mean it's easy or any of that stuff. This means I was fortunate enough to have perspective. So when these things come to people a lot of times later in life, that is their coursework because they had put off this lesson, this understanding. They haven't had the opportunity to learn it. So they're given these high dose experiences of this where they're literally in a sink or swim within their own mental health, with their spiritual health, their physical health. Then that consumes them and then the world gives us all this drama and all these um, pageantry and bread and wine for the circus so that people can forget this thing that they're fighting and project that tension into external form, into the play and feed into the circuit, the shadow loop projections. I think it's more prevalent in societies, specifically um, Societies that are highly mental, <laughs> like Western societies. But I mean, you know, the West is everywhere. When I was in Japan, I could feel the uh, quiet life of desperation in most people. Let's go. Hold on. It's a beautiful and it's tragic. But not everyone has the same idea of a good life as I do. Maybe bowling on Friday nights is, um, <laughs> that's heaven on earth for some people. Watching the game and pounding brews. <laughs> That's heaven for some people. So we're all here doing our things. We're all seeing different uh, themes play out. And they're relational to our personal experiences. Otherwise, we wouldn't see them. And what little we do know of it, we can speak on because we're learning, you know. When you speak, it means you're willing to um, sacrifice what it is to learn something new. To expand, expound upon it. When you don't speak, you're holding it as a truth. And if you uh, have found the truths that you don't speak on and they're working for you, then you're blessed. For me, absolutions are just contradictions waiting to die. The golden rule is essentially the drone of life. It's a beautiful thing. Hmm. All right, well, I don't know what else to say, so uh, 
Thanks for listening and watching and being.